Hello, uglies, and welcome to another fun edition of Dragula Titans uh, summary here on <laughs> reality TV wrap ups. I'm keeping this in because I've tried to do this like five times now, and we were just joking <laughs> that I'm like Victoria Elizabeth Black, who can't get her lines. <laughs> lines. Um, but of course, I'm not joking by myself about my inability to speak. I brought in a special guest to be able to roast my inability to speak. And that is, of course, Jeremy Carey. A Carey. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, I love. Hi, I'm Jeremy Carey. Um, you may know me from um, other drag related shows or on Twitch um, or uh, just being a badass makeup artist and cosplay artist. Um, but yeah, I'm here to join Beth and we're here to um, review and talk about Dracula. You know what's so funny is like literally a few. Yeah, thank you for introducing yourself because clearly I'm struggling. I'm just like so overwhelmed with feelings about the Dragula Titan season that I can't formulate words or sentences. Yeah, um, yeah, lots, of, lots of feelings. Mm -hmm. um, but Jeremy, I'm so happy to have you back. I know that um, obviously we were able to talk about the first three episodes a couple. I was almost, I was gonna say weeks, but almost a couple months ago at this point. Yeah, and I'm excited to have you back to hear your thoughts, both professional and personal, about the drag, the looks, the competition itself, and maybe just our overall feelings about how Dragula Titans began um, and and ended, I should say. So like the whole story of the season um i think that we both when we started watching this felt really strong about how great the season was shaping up from the very beginning yeah and i think that we saw some really incredible drag throughout <laughs> it but i think you know i have a couple criticisms here and there yeah that, yeah, yeah yeah that's nothing new for me to be the mouth at home who's just in there not having to put any work or talent into drag but just gets to have an opinion and whatever yeah. um so I'm, I'm excited to hear your thoughts about it as well yeah yeah um i did i i really enjoyed the season i i i enjoy every season honestly mm -hmm. um as a as as a viewer obviously there's decisions we don't agree with and sure. um i'm happy to know i'm not the only one that feels these this way about a lot of the decisions so there's that um but as like an artist and in the craft and being through this whole experience um mm -hmm. there's little things that i saw that i'm just like man like i wish they could see it from the outside perspective because then they sure. would like you know totally tackle a situation differently um but i mean all in all it it, it was it was it was a fun um fun season to watch i'm gonna i'm gonna be 1000 percent honest um i i the ending was a little lackluster for me. Yeah. Um, I really was hoping that they were just going to go out with a, like a huge bang. It's Titans. That's what I was expecting, like a Titan finish. But um, it was kind of like, a, I, I don't know. It just felt like a normal challenge type thing to me. I, I, it's, yeah, it, it was, it had a lackluster ending for such um, a dramatic season and a season yeah. where we saw some really incredible ingenuity with drag and vision. And I, I know that we're used to a certain formula with having three different looks that represent um, filth, horror, and glamour. And instead we have this concept where everyone in the finale has to come up with one look in one floor show that's going to encompass those three tenants, but also drag, they added as the fourth tenant um, and category mm -hmm. to think about. And I like it in concept. I don't know if I liked it in execution. Um, yeah. So yeah, I yeah. think maybe, Jeremy, I think it maybe makes sense for us. Let's just jump right into the finale. Okay. Let's, let's talk go. about the finale and our thoughts on it. And then we can kind of go back and talk a little bit about what were some of the highlights of the season, whether they be looks or challenges, yeah. um, drama points, whatever we want to talk about. Ooh, there, because there's a lot. I uh, need therapy uh, after this season. <laughs> girl <laughs> you're so not much. lying oh i like God. literally a show that i went to my therapy appointment and i was like you want to know how wait I no am. you didn't did this you really no no <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. they're like beth um you like, have oh, she an hour long session and you just spent an hour showing me one episode of dragula and be like yeah and, and now our third you third know special where guest I'm today is uh <laughs> beth's therapist yeah that's my mom <laughs> actually mom come on down. I, uh, <laughs> I am, by the way, uh, for those of you watching or whatever, I am in the basement of my parents' house right now because uh, it's still the holidays. Um, so that's why I look like in a very different setting with a really bad setup. But that's where we're at. 
I love that. Whatever. We're being crafty. Um, so let's talk about the finale. So I felt like the finale was a really interesting in concept, like I said, but I felt like the execution of the the looks was a little weird. Like I I got certain aspects from each person, but I don't think anybody did a good job of covering all the bases of what they were supposed to for the challenge. This is the thing. I I I don't want to compare things, but for sure. cosplay, my show that was featured on Twitch, um, oh. for the finale, it was very much, it was almost the exact same thing where everybody had to produce their own original character. They mm -hmm. had to tell their story through their original character, but they had to do it in a short. Yeah. Um, and I think to make that super effective and really get the audience um, on whatever you know team that they're on, I really wish I would have seen it from start to finish on there. And I know that yeah. I know Dragula uh, does the, you know, the compilation of all the different looks in there and to make like this badass ending. But I think like the storytelling, I think would have been more clear. There's parts in there that I was like, wait, who is sucking on that boy's neck? Like I couldn't, I didn't know that that was Coco <laughs> as a spider, you know, this venomous right. poisonous, you know, creature. I, I, I had no clue. And then I was like, Oh wait, no, is she coming from the moth? The moth? The spider? Like I had no clue. Cause right. it kind of weaved. Um, and then I was like, wait a minute, are they all doing a number together? Like, is this inside Victoria's lab? Like, what's happening? So I felt like, right. I wish that that was kind of like separate so they each had their moment to shine. Yeah. And and, and showcase that. As far as looks are concerned, I <clears throat> my favorite look at the end was Hoso's like moth. Yeah. It was the most beautiful thing. And that was so, it was so Hoso. And it was so, mm -hmm. um, it was just it, like it was just beautifully done but then i know that they i know i know they were talking up hoso and people might not agree with me and that's fine it's just my opinion but i know they were talking up hoso's like reveal but i thought the reveal was just so lackluster you come out of this like beautiful beautiful thing and then it came into this bodysuit and i was just like oh well it wasn't bad they didn't look bad in any means it was just right. like oh i like i like the moth look i thought that was cool i think that I think that that's where I've had issues with Hoso's look in particular, because I a thousand percent agree with you. If they had kept the moth outfit on and were able to have a different kind of reveal other than just a, basically a plain bodysuit. And it's also kind of the lighting for it didn't do it any justice. Like it was just really hard with the yeah. cinematography to really keep up with what was going on. Um, I, I just felt like it was really honestly lackluster and I felt like it was such a unique take on glamour mm -hmm. before yeah. I thought it would be like a like glamour in a gruesome way or something like that that would be really beautiful you know what it reminded me of do you remember uh, Christina Aguilera's fighter video and there was like she's the moth up there and then she was like separates oh, from it oh yeah it was kind of giving me that but so then I like I, I love the story like they're emerging from this like cocoon into this yeah. moth but then what did the moth turn into Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, same color. But like, I, <laughs> I don't. I, but that's that was the thing. I was like, what? I don't. I don't know. And I was so. I was just like, oh fuck! Like this is epic. And then it. And then that happened. Uh, Victoria looked great, but the look yeah. was just kind of like a, know, a regular look. I think they did way cooler looks prior to this being their final look. That it was just. And like, I think oh. the reason for that was I think, and I can be corrected if I'm wrong here, but I'm fairly certain this look had to be made a hundred percent on set. So I don't think. Victoria had all the different tricks up her sleeve that she would have had been able to bring to like, oh, I'm going to have some latex for my face already made. Um, I just feel like she's super creative, you know, oh, incredible. and like, she yeah. does stuff as a, as a, okay. Um, as a makeup artist, we do the same kind of stuff, same transformations mm -hmm. are not the same. Like they're like, they're incredible too. Like, you know, the same field and like, sure. So we know the shortcuts, we know how to do things fast. In my mind, like if you're making this creature, this adult form from your childhood, I, I just feel like there's an easy way you could have stitched up some, you could have been like different pieces, even if they took like different pieces of other outfits and patched it together. Like, yeah. I think that would have been a different. really sick idea. Like the or idea like, that what if they took pieces from each of their outfits from yeah. this season and like yeah. I'm trying to be the perfect yeah, super monster. 
I think that would have been really, I think that would have been really, really cool to see. It, it, it's it's hard because it's not bad. It's just when Victoria decides to slay every fucking other challenge and be this <laughs> amazing fucking walking art piece. And then and then the final is, that, you know, this, I, I, I felt like Victoria's was more about the story than it was about the look. A thousand. And, I, yeah. I definitely agree with that. I felt like Hoso had the balance of a little bit of a story and a little bit of a transformational look, but it was overall kind of midway for both, mm -hmm, I think. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Victoria was very performance based and I felt mm -hmm. like Coco's was very look oriented, but I didn't necessarily understand a story. You know, I like Coco. Coco's all about sex. And it didn't stop in the final performance either. It sure did not. <laughs> she was smacking asses. She, but you know what? I, I did love the spider. I didn't know who it was for the longest time, though, because they didn't mm -hmm. show the face for a while. So that yeah. was, I was like, who is this? Especially when they're flashing back and forth, like I said, from the cocoon to the spider. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, I don't know who this is. But um, once, they, once they showed her face, I, I thought she looked great. I, I thought that was really mm -hmm. cool. Um, uh it's it, it was it was like i wish she kind of like got up and did more i felt yeah. like she was on the floor for most of it and maybe that was just the editing and what we saw from like what they edited for the video um but yeah i i don't i don't know it was it, interesting it was, it was okay i felt like she was on the floor for a lot yeah. and then they got they started getting like then they were up on like a duck walk and yeah. then they like grew so i thought that that maybe that was supposed to be the story that like I don't know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> found a way to stand on your own two feet, even though you're eight legged. I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. I just, I, I thought it was a really interesting idea. I love that they were able to put together a, a, a huge black widow costume um, yeah. and go from there. I just, for Coco, I felt like there was a lack of filth. Like it was. Well, it was horror. probably stolen or she was probably sabotaged. Ah. Uh, did we ever get closure on that? <laughs> no. You know what's uh, funny? Okay, so people thought I sabotaged Jiggly on Drag Race. And, like, I was hiding her shit and everything. But Jiggly is just, uh, she just misplaces shit all the time. They thought I stole her titties in place. I was like, honestly, y'all, I told Jiggly to her face. I wasn't worried about Jiggly, y'all. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't need to hide her tits, girl. Yeah, yeah, no, don't worry. She was safe from me. Um, and then I kicked her off the show. But, um, see... <laughs> <laughs> um but like jiggly's the same way like she you know you get in especially in this mindset like things get misplaced you're like okay yeah. like uh, your 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 brain's going a thousand miles an hour like you got to remember all this shit so i kind of feel like maybe there is some misplacement happening i, I don't know yeah <laughs> i think that there was probably some misplacement but i also think it sounded like potentially things were also damaged and so i'm interested to know whether that was also like a whoops i didn't pack it correctly or if you know, something got mishandled by production. That's what I think. Casting. I think that. Because like on set, well, so there's, I don't, I, I'm not too familiar with um, the setup for Titans, but at least on Drag Race, um, we had our own little sections, which you, which is, I don't know, do they still have that? I think so, yeah. So the little sections and we, like we could safely put our stuff there, but sometimes things would get moved around. Now, I don't know if they've changed the rules. I don't know. I don't know any of that, but like sometimes we would have production be like, Hey, can you go grab this from me or this that, and the other things can get damaged or misplaced or that sure. happened. So I feel like maybe that could, and I don't, I don't feel like anybody, I feel like in this setting, I don't feel anybody would honestly intentionally try to sabotage someone's stuff like that. Right. Um, especially with this group. Like, they might have fought and, did, and bickered and stuff. I don't, but I don't think, in my, I, my, deep down in my heart, I don't feel like they would do that. But I also don't think, like, Coco doesn't strike me as the person that the only time they bring it up ever is, like, at judging randomly. I feel like Coco's the type of person that would have been, like, where's my shit? And, yeah. like, been making a deal out of it so i felt like for me from an editing standpoint it was a really interesting moment for it to be kind of like a reveal of drama that ultimately really goes nowhere and isn't resolved yeah, yeah. um at that point i'm kind of like why keep that in the show yeah. <laughs> i don't know yeah, yeah. um but yeah like kind of going back i just kind of felt like coco was missing filth for me i felt like victoria was missing like like the point of Victoria's performance was like missing the glamour almost you know what I mean like there was there was glamorous aspects to it but it wasn't like any I felt like it kind of looked like some of the other outfits I've seen from Victoria before it didn't like blow my mind the dress didn't or anything mm -hmm. like that um and 
honestly, there was a little filth missing from that too. It was more horror, I guess. I don't know. And and, and with Hoso, I felt like there was filth. Yeah. And I and I felt like there, but I didn't. I don't know. I just felt like there was aspects of each of those like tenants that I was missing from each performer that I would have liked to see to make it a little stronger. And yeah. I think that in concept, again, this idea of making one look that encompasses it all or one floor show that encompasses it all is great. And I don't know if they need to give them more time or more guidance, but I kind of prefer the normal season where you get one look for each yeah. thing in one yeah, floor yeah. show. Cause I think of like some of the like, grossest things i've ever seen are like from the filth right that i yeah. never like bitch pudding eating like the like hair yeah. from like the the mop bucket and everything and just things i would never have thought is like oh that gets under my skin that's so gross like yeah that idea i didn't have that visceral reaction to literally yeah. anybody this time and if we're being honest anybody that watched the show wants to see these looks they, they want to yeah. see looks. They want to see the performance. They want to see all this. And yeah. so, um, yeah, I think the variations would have been really, really cool to have. But Definitely. Um, so we actually have been talking about It's not about our today. show. <laughs> it's not our show. But, you know, I said, you know, I said this today on Twitter. I was like, listen, I'm going to podcast about drag as somebody who does not participate in the art of drag. No, but that's appreciated, though, because people don't do that. Right. I, I want people to understand that I'm an appreciator of the drag. I want to celebrate queer art and I want to... Queer! I'm just kidding. No. Yeah, and queer <laughs> artists <laughs> out there. <laughs> Hot button topic nowadays. Um, but I just, like, I want people to understand that I know that my opinion can mean dirt or it can mean everything to somebody, but at this, at whatever, it doesn't matter. No, what I like about you, though, is that, I don't mean cut you off, um, I, Stop like, you, you do, you do, um, so many people have their opinions, <laughs> but you <laughs> admit that, like, you don't do this, and, and I think that's yeah. appreciative, and nothing that you're saying is bad, nothing that, I mean, I would say, tell you something if it was bad, but nothing you're saying is at a place you. of malice, and then, and, like, you're not being hurtful to these girls, you're just saying, like, as a viewer, what you like and what you uh, were missing, yeah. and I think that's fine, yeah. Yeah, definitely, but I, the reason why I put that out So who out did you there, hate? Okay, so let me put I'm just kidding, there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All of this, I fucking hate <laughs> <laughs> um, I can honestly say, though, that when it came to the challenges this season, I felt like there were some really good challenges, but I kind of felt like there were some really, like, blunt ones as well. Which ones? Um, I, I'm going to be honest. I love the concept of the D&D &D challenge. I hate the execution of it. Like, it's, I, I'm like, okay, like. The, like, I what would like, you want different? Do you play D&D? I have played D and D in the okay. past, and I I would love to get more into it. I when I say that I've played, I've done like half of a campaign. So let me also preface by saying that like I'm not like the world's most knowledgeable D and D player. I like yeah. kind of know races and classes and things. Okay, yeah. so I'm not like an encyclopedia. Yeah. Um, but with that said, I like the fact that it's an acting challenge, and I think that's really great. But I don't like that they're assigning which race and class they are because yeah. I feel like that's inherently inequitable to what the performers can come up with themselves. I think it would be better to say, here are the roles and you all divvy it out because first of all, yeah. you know, there's going to be drama with that, especially <laughs> with this cast. Yeah. And the fact that there was like three elves and high elves and like, I feel like Erica was set up to fail with being a gnome. Like gnomes are like, that's so. That's my <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have that. I think, <laughs> as I watched it, I thought, Jeremy, <laughs> your moment. <laughs> Yo, I would have channeled my inner willow, y'all. I would have been up in this gig. <laughs> yeah. But I just, I feel like that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. It's like, no, I yeah. feel like yeah. if there was a little bit more agency, and I understand that some of this is going to be production needs to challenge yeah. the queens in some way, but. Um, that was one that I felt like was a little lackluster for me. And, um, I love the idea of the zombie prom, but I didn't like the execution from some of the Queens. And so it no, was just of kind course, of like, yeah. I felt like that was the weakest challenge overall for people was but like, you know why I think because uh, they said this earlier, not that they're ugly, but they no. don't do pretty. Like they don't do like 
they don't do like that type of drag all the time and like right. some of them can do it like uh, obviously mm -hmm. melissa she's a beauty queen yeah. um uh victoria beautiful like she does beauty as well but some of the some of yeah. them don't that's not their their gig um mm -hmm. i do think it would have been more effective i i actually think um astrid looks great yeah and, and it gave me like this like 80s uh prom and i was like oh you look like fantastic um yeah but I do wish, like, uh, like Hoso, I, I wish she changed her eyes for that one. Yeah. And then maybe turned it, like, that to me would have been, the, that to me would have been a win. If Hoso did that and changed it completely, that would have been a, a fucking win. Because I'd be like, oh, now that is a transformation. Because we already know what Hoso looks like. And and it's how can Hoso now meet the criteria for this, for this, um, for this challenge. Yep. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think that, I think that would have been really, really cool to see. Um the D&D &D challenge, I, I didn't mind it. I like the idea of, of what they were doing. I do agree. I, I wish that we would have saw them like divvy up the, the races or like um, maybe pull it out of a hat, spin a wheel. I don't fucking know. Throw some dice. I mean, that's part of, you know, that's D &D. pretty sweet. So yeah. yeah, and like what they get is what they get. Now I'm sure that they already had this pre-assigned. I'm 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 guessing I could be wrong, but I'm yeah, sure they I'm already had this pre-assigned. <clears throat> um, I do have critiques with like people's stuff, like Astrid, like who was like I'm D and D fanatic, um, and then had the bard, but then like there was like no music other than like in their obviously the part that we I'm don't sorry hear. did you not hear them play <laughs> whatever that I don't know I'm gonna mess up the little fiddle thing I'm gonna the get yelled at but whatever. whatever it was <laughs> yeah sure the, I the, it's, the, it's been the like fiddle, a month fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. <laughs> but the, whatever that was that I mean that's great it sounded cool I think that was awesome but I wish like with their execution with their lines and stuff like it's a bard like you're a musical like you could be like mm -hmm, but what about over there like you know something like that would have like change it to be like oh they're fucking annoying ass singing little bard <laughs> you know other than that they just look like a yeah. pirate to me you know um jeremy can i ask are you no. like me in that every okay bye no. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what yeah yes go ahead every time I talk about D and D with somebody. They're like, "You would make the perfect bard." <laughs> like, they crazy. literally say that to me all the time. Can I, I, tell you that I do not like. Uh, I I don't like bards in games. I think they're so fucking annoying. But they're also and like and maybe that's people telling me <laughs> I'm fucking annoying. Well, let's drink to that. Two annoying Cheers. people talking. About <laughs> hey, I do want to play D and D though. So like, I was very excited about this, and uh, lots of people told told me that I would like have a blast with D and D. So I was really excited to see that, and as like a little yeah. gaming nerd, I think that's really cool that they you know incorporated that into the show. I, I yeah, I like the challenges this season. I my favorite part of the challenges are when they take something classic and then have to uh, twist it, and they I did agree. a lot of that on this. Um, on this from classic horror mm -hmm. um characters to halloween um outfits to um sea monsters yeah it was just really really cool really really cool to see i agree and i think that i think what the whereas drag race has kind of moved away from really being pretty like i would say like a third to half of the challenges in the beginning portion of seasons was really design based Dragula still has design roots with it where you know these no, are people that. who are creating they're making they're cosplay artists they're drag artists they understand how to do unique things with everyday materials they're the macgyvers of putting together an outfit and i think that's so incredible and it shows such a, a, a command of understanding um you know what you can do what your body type is what pushing the envelope in terms of you know creativity and i think that my one note is for some reason a producer happens to hear this. I my one note is stay true to what Dragula is and try not to become anything drag race is. I'm wondering if they are starting to go that way because I mean Dragula is getting bigger. It's getting bigger and it bigger is? and bigger and bigger. Yeah. And it, it's kind of like the nature of the beast. It's gonna go in that way. And I did feel like there was some similarities on this season. I was like, yep. mm. and and I agree. I think I think. One of the reasons I fell in love with, the sh wanted to be on Drag Race, or you know, one of the reasons I fell in love with uh, Dragula is because there was finally a place that I could share my art and what I can do with these hands and what I can create and the magic that I can bring onto the you stage. With these hands? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. this, <laughs> see me with them hands is what one great friend Tatiana once said. Um, <clears throat> so I, <laughs> I I do love that part of, of drag. I do feel drag drag race now is so like commercial that it's all about acting yeah. and what personality you can put on there and who can sell a commercial and this product and that this and the other. Agreed. It's not about it's not about anymore about like oh what can you make because now you have designers to do that shit for you. Yeah. So 
um, that's what I really love about Dracula. And I don't want to compare the two, but I mean, no. it, it is, it, it's kind of the nature of the beast as well. Um, I do love that I get to sit down and see uh, the art. I, I look forward to the floor show every time because I'm just blown away. Mm-hmm. And like literally drag, Dracula just like, it inspires me as an artist and it takes a lot to inspire me because I'm just like, I've seen it. I've seen that. I've seen that. And mm-hmm. Dragula, they just do shit I've never like seen before. It like blows me away. So. And you know what I think? I, a big shout out to the cinematographers who, and the, the video editors who put together the floor shows because so often, and I, and I also have to say in terms of editing for the episodes as well, so often we don't see some of the biggest mishaps that happen in oh, the yeah. floor shows and they film them in such creative, cool ways. I do yeah. think that there are occasionally times where it takes away from, I can't see all the details I wish I could, Yeah, but I'd much rather see a floor show. But they show. want their contestants to shine. Exactly. And that's respect. That's, and that's I what I love. That. And I mm-hmm. do love that when the boulets are talking and they're like, well, you know, Astrid fell over six times today. Like, and we didn't see that. Or if we did, they made it look like it was intentional in the moment yeah. or something like that. And I think exactly what you're saying. What a respect for the performers. I love mm-hmm. that so, so much. Please never lose that. And also, um, I know that it's my 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 good friend um, Delfron's favorite part of the episode. Shout out to all those really fun like cutscene things that they do for the boules before. Oh yeah, you know, the floor show that boom, Dom, boom, 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 <laughs> yeah. boom, boom, like it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. so cool. I love that every single time. It, it's every single time I listen to it, I watch it. I'm like, sorry, RuPaul. Would no, they look great. Like, yeah, no, they look great. <laughs> they look she so can't good. move. What you mean? <laughs> Oh my god! I, I, Can you imagine? It's just that. it would just be different angles of her sitting in different positions. I'm sorry, <laughs> like, RuPaul what? can move one step to the left and one step to the right. She can she can move one step closer to the exit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there we go. With the sweatpants underneath there. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I I do I definitely think though that there are you know there were some elements of this like you're saying like the the, the creativity that we're getting to see yeah. from some of the challenges what were some of your favorite challenges that Oof. um i know that we've kind of talked like generally but like which challenge do you think like the queens just absolutely nailed it almost all the way across the board i feel like the wrestling challenge and maybe i'm biased because in season four we did a wrestling challenge mm. and i it was my and i've said this in any interview i've ever done it's been my favorite challenge of all fucking time because i'm not gonna lie i was a hater on wrestling y'all i would make fun of it it's fake this that and the other talk shit and it wasn't until i actually stepped and now i'm not obviously doing things like the wwf but it wasn't until we actually were like trained and like um got to experience how fucking fun that is um and i feel like you can really tell like how fun it is because in in any time we've ever seen this type of challenge the girls are having a blast and oh, like yeah. they're and it's just it's just a good damn time but they all had their like individual looks i thought they all did great in it it was really cool to see uh people that um were like kind of nervous about this or like oh no like they have this idea of like oh we're weak or, we're we're twinky we can't do this and then they like slay it on there yeah and i'm <laughs> like it was just it was enjoyable to watch i was laughing when i was watching that episode too because i was like oh this is funny like this is good (laughs) um but it was like you could see them having fun and i think that was really important um but i I, really think so too yeah, but I'm I'm a sucker for the design challenges. I love when they could take things and um and uh, put a new spin on it. I, I think that's really refreshing, and I think that's I like doing stuff like that too because then it challenges me to mm-hmm. uh, um, change people's perception of like something that's so popular that like when you see that you're like oh that's 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 this character or whatever. But like if you can twist it and still get that same reaction. Um, but it's your own look. I just think that that's talent. I definitely agree. I think that, you know, for me, I really enjoyed the wrestling um, episode as well. I think that the reason why we have a double save for that episode is just purely because, yeah, even though Eva probably had one of the weaker looks and Hoso had one of the weakest, if not the weakest performance, like overall, it was fun and fierce. And I just yeah. thought that that was fun fierce in the drag sense not in the ball sense um but i i just think that that was it was just so cool to see it was cool to see people kind of come out of their element i i'm gonna be honest i never thought like that would be a, a challenge that i thought like victoria would do incredibly well in to be honest yeah. with you and it was yeah. really fun in like this like neanderthal yeah yeah leather yeah, yeah, yeah. daddy kind of <laughs> outfit like what was that i was so intrigued like it was so much fun 
Yeah. And Melissa killed that so much. I yeah, love the China um, inspiration. It was so incredible to see. Um, and yeah, no, and I, and I, and I just side note, Katya was a guest on that <laughs> episode. She just hated everyone's shoes. Everyone, <laughs> I was like, Katya, it, love it. you, but normally you're, you should not be the judge of shoes. I don't Literally, know. Literally, like, <laughs> I was like, this bitch is wearing Crocs on stage <laughs> with like a rubber decky onesie. And I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> Oh, uh, maybe she maybe she was inspired. I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, we're gonna see her wearing a little grandma kitten strap up heel <laughs> and white. Uh, sometime it'll be good. Uh, no, so I just I just side no. I thought that was really funny. Yeah. Um. So you know, I, I I agree with you. I think that those challenges were fun. I also I I really liked the idea of the sea monster, but I felt like it was kind of the <laughs> inverse where I didn't feel like. They most people did super strongly. I, I think it was like clearly Eva and then everybody else. Like I just my favorites for those Eva was great. And it's funny because when yeah. I watched the episode in my head, I was thinking like, God, like they're saying like deep sea and like all that kept coming to my mind that like nobody was doing as I was like, why is nobody like being attacked by like poisonous like coral mm. and anemones and like be mm -hmm. the be the and be the bed because that shit's actually deadly yeah. and and i was like can you imagine being like a, like a coral reef is like growing through you and like a dead but that would have been epic and then all of a sudden um eva comes out as like the floor and i was like mm -hmm. oh this is great this is fantastic but i love astrid's too i thought astrid's was fantastic um with the uh, the squid yes i know they commented on the beak i like the beak i didn't mind it i love that and i mean you know who i'm, tr I'm trying to remember who this was if um somebody and i'm looking through the looks right now just so i can remember but I felt like somebody was, yeah, it, it was Astrid. I felt like Astrid could have gone for a, a, a take on Davy Jones a little bit. Like mm. that's what I was kind of getting with this idea <clears throat> of like the like the um, whatever shirt, the blouse that yeah 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 the little wearing. puffy pirate looking shirt yeah I, and like with the squid kind of stuff. And I just kind of had this idea that like I feel like she shouldn't though. I think she was smart that she didn't because they okay. don't they don't want cosplay. And they, right. and they say that often. So I feel like it was good that that she didn't do something mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah. Because then that she would have been compared to that, you know what I mean? And then she wasn't, mm -hmm. she like avoided that. So I think that was kind yeah. of kind of smart to do. I, I love that like for her boots, it was mm. tentacles and it, it covered the boots. That way it just looked like these tentacles were like moving through these legs. And I thought that was yeah. so creative. I do wish that Astrid would slow down when they're modeling. <laughs> yeah, because I like, I want to see. Astrid has like such like beautiful, intricate like shit. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, I just want to like zoom in on everything and just look, I, I want to take it in. Like, yeah. I, I think it's cool to like go out there and do it, but then like sell that shit, like show like why this is so, so epic. And then when the lights turn on, Astrid is so good about putting details and weathering on outfits and like the mm -hmm. fabric choices that they use. It just looks real. It looks like theater. And I, and I, I, yeah. I, I, I love it. Um, do you know what a hagfish is? Um, I had to look it up. I did too. Um, so I'm so sorry, Hoso, but no one's going to get it. If like, I mean, maybe that's a, a pretty popular fish for people to know in South Korea. And I, maybe that's just like a, a, like yeah. a disconnect in terms of culture and such, but I definitely did not know what a hagfish was. I, and when I looked I, it up, I was like, oh, I can I just, kind of see that, but not fully. I couldn't see it. It looked like a snake eel to me. Yeah, it's a type and of so eel. And so I couldn't, and I, I could see like in the front of the mouth, there's like a little teeth. So to me, I thought when I looked at it, and I'm probably gonna get shit for this, but I, and I thought it would have been funny if they said this, it looked like a monkey. And I was like, wouldn't it be huh? funny if she was like, I'm a sea monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I was like, there we go. That's funny. But that's what I thought because I'm assuming this was the mouth, um, but they look like monkey ears. Um, yeah. And so I was like, it would have been funny. But I, I feel like, and I, I, one of my favorite things about Hoso is that they are constantly bringing in their culture and educating people in Western worlds and stuff totally. and, and uh, about um, Korea and everything. And I think that's, I think that's so beautiful. 
as an Asian, I'm like slices. Um, but the uh, the problem with that too is that if you're gonna take something that is only like super popular there, like and not many people know it, you have to be able to present it in a way that people are gonna automatically get it through through whatever you're presenting. Right. Um, and so I, I it was really hard to tell, especially when your outfit there was a disconnect in the outfit too. So the storytelling wasn't complete either, yeah. um, which was hard. Um, but I still think uh, I, I think a sea monkey. If she said sea monkey, I would have been like, oh, I'm on board, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I would die. I literally never thought that. And then you said that. And I've looked back now at the at the, at the, at the photo. picture of it. And I'm like, I can see that. <laughs> I, but, I'm going to go be ahead. honest with you, Jeremy. I felt like Hoso should have been in the bottom in that episode. No, I, I just wait. Who was in the bottom of that? I don't remember. Um, Melissa and Coco, and there was a third person. Wait, but they weren't up for Me- elimination. Melissa left that one, and that was the episode that Melissa left. Right. Um, I'm fairly certain that Astrid was like the third person that was supposed to be in the bottom, but really got saved or something like that. But I, the bottom half had no business being on the stage. Like for someone who's so intricate with all their looks and such, like. Hoso. That Hoso, yeah, yeah it was just yeah. like yeah. black leather, like leather. Yeah, no, it, it looked like an uh, some of the stuff on there looked like a uh, like an afterthought, and it was kind of like. Mm. And, and I honestly, and I might get shit for this, and I understand if that's the case, but it didn't look so different from other things that Hoso has kind of come up with and done. Yeah, yeah. and I kind of was like, oh yeah, it's Hoso, and Hoso's you know doing what? the same kind of performance. I see, so I kind of felt like that would have been a really great moment to put Hoso in the bottom to like, not to mention this was the episode after they were in the bottom and were saved. And we see later that, yeah, Eva might've gone home, but Eva had to like kill it every episode. Why didn't Hoso have to kill it every episode when Eva did that in this episode and Hoso didn't bring the same level. So I just felt like that was like a little inherent bias coming in from the, from the Boulay brothers, but Mm -hmm. that's just me. As far as Hoso's looks, I, I do get this like crustacean vibe often yeah. from them, and they do it well. It, it, it's it's fantastic. It's that crustacean um, kind of thing. I think it is, it, but that's what I love. But you know what? I blame Hoso for anybody having a, a not fallen in love with this uh, outfit completely because Hoso is always so fucking detailed on their shit that like when you like literally from head to fucking toe, and if we're talking about toes, the fucking ring girl literally down to her toes, toes. Is painted black. Like there's detail always there. So when you come out there with something that's like half detailed and you're like wait a minute like this isn't the hoso we know so i blame hoso for being called out for <laughs> for their outfit <laughs> so side note um for their um sadako um look i really would have loved for dvd to come out and be like okay we're now commissioning this as a skin that you it's can play so for dead by daylight because that would have been so amazing i I, it's my favorite look of theirs the entire season. It it was just, it was so so beautiful. I literally gasped when I saw Hoso because I was just like, it it, it told a story, the the hair that just, it was just, this is what I'm talking about, details from head to toe. It was just, it was, it was literally a walking art piece. And I was just like, oh my God, I didn't want to stop looking. And, um, but that's what we expect from Hoso. And that's why if you come out looking like a hagfish, emphasis like, on hag <laughs> i uh, i it's hard to like give that props when you come out looking like you know the girl from yeah. the ring i'm just like oh my gosh um and, but and I again do... we see that same art like uh artsmanship in the in craftsmanship in the finale with that moth look but then the mm-hmm. same kind of thing that's a bummer which is like pantsuit slash leggings or like it's just not pantsuit what am i trying to say bodysuit yeah. It's, I, I feel... Oh, oh, she's a Clinton stan. Oh, she's a Hillary Clinton. <laughs> you Hashtag I'm with her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag but her emails. Um, no, could you imagine if on, somebody... Okay, imagine this. If somebody in their final look did Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton. <laughs> and it was like horror, glamour, fil- filth is her like imagine vomiting Hillary Clinton up Clinton as a emails. judge though. Ugh, oh my you know god I mean? that would it, be it, fucking iconic that would i'm be just so saying iconic. listen i might not be able to execute anything or no, make that's anything a great but idea. if someone needs an ideas person i'm here for i'm you. into that yeah 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 yeah. So. <laughs> but her emails come on um 
yeah, <laughs> lock her up. Uh, no, I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. That's not how I feel. Um, yeah. So you heard it here, right? You heard there. it here. <laughs> That's a bigot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Go. Good times. Um, <laughs> okay. So, what were some looks that maybe? that pop in your mind of things that you would have loved to have seen. Burn. Yeah. On fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me think. Um, things like from the whole entire cast or like what, like who? Sure, yeah. For, like whoever, heck the boulets, if there was something that they, I'm just kidding. Um, if there's actually, I'm just kidding. <laughs> could you imagine people I... like, actually, here's a running list. Of... I cannot, oh, you know what? I, everybody knows I love the Boulay brothers, but I am not a fan. And this is on anybody. I hate, hate, I hate <laughs> those nails that are like, they look like gargoyle. Because oh, then they, they look like the they have, thing. yeah. Yeah. Cause then everybody looks, they look like little, I don't know if they're gargoyle talons or dragon. Claw, I don't know what they yeah, are. They, like they love them. They love them, but they, and um, they love to use them when they're, yeah, but I feel like it shortens everyone's hands. So then everyone looks like this the whole time. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh man, especially when they have, they, you know, they're so into this mm -hmm. and um, I'm so used to their long dagger nails, but I, those nails, every time I see them, I'm like, oh, there's the nubs. <laughs> the nubs are back. <laughs> no. Bringing to the stage some, nubs. <laughs> if anything, I think that I feel like um, Swan uh, Swathula is like the one that always does mm -hmm. this more than. But it's like crack. <laughs> so I feel like the the fingers allow them to just kind of do this, but like this does the work for them. <laughs> I'm like, I can't. I want to pop uh, their fingers or something because it, <laughs> it bothers me. Okay, oh Boulez, you may not want Jeremy on ever again as a, as a guest. <laughs> I'm um, gonna pop your fingers. Oh God. Uh, but uh, let me think. Okay, outfit-wise, uh, looks, um, I think, <sighs> I think, um, and it was really heartbreaking to actually watch this. Um, mm -hmm. Erica, uh, I, I feel... Okay, this is what I admire about Erica. So yeah. Erica um, still, this is the thing I was talking about, like Hoso and like their signature eye look. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Hoso did switch it up sometimes, but like um, Erica switched it up often, like yeah. so many times, but we still knew that was Erica. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really, really cool. I love that Erica always had this like playful, like this like whimsical gamer, god punk, you know, um, grunge, like a thing going on. I just yeah. wish it was a little bit refined. And maybe that was just like, you know, they were in their head head too much. But a lot of this stuff, I just wish I, like, I want to just sit down with Erica and be like, oh, let's do this. Yeah. Like, I think this idea is great. Now let's, let's turn it into this. Like, let's amp this up a little bit. Um, and then the only other person, and it was sad because I just love them, but there, I don't think there was like, one outfit and i'm sorry that i enjoyed but um oh my god why can't i remember her name and now i just sound like an asshole she's like off third um Aura? no kendra? no i love yes kendra oh my god i forgot oh my god sorry cool. but um yeah i just felt bad it, it, it reminded me of like um a lot of like store-bought stuff that they kind of just altered for it mm. um abora is great just a board never followed the, the challenge. No. <laughs> so I, mm. I went through and I was looking back and I was like, if Abora was not given a category and just came out doing whatever they wanted, they would win the season. Like mm -hmm. that's you know what I mean? But I just think that Abora's biggest challenge will always be tailoring their drag to the challenge. Yeah. And then I think that there's somebody who you know, should probably follow the Coco Chanel, like take two things off before you leave the house kind of thing. Like, I feel like take one or two of those ideas and don't do it for your, for your looks. Because I think that Abora clearly has such a genius vision when it comes oh, to horror drag. Like if I think of horror drag. Yeah, no, they're great. Abora is my like top person I'm thinking of hands down. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just think that, you know, it, it, again, this is a, a reflection of some people are really great drag artists, but just aren't good in drag competition shows or drag competitions altogether. Right. Um, there's are incredible. You to say me. Listen, um, <laughs> <laughs> say it in my face. 
<laughs> don't okay, be fake. Like, I don't need any fake people around. Okay, I'm just I say this with I'm out. Love. I'm leaving. No. <laughs> I'm done. I'm... I say this with love. Your your taste in sugar cookies is awful. Oh my so... god! Don't get me started. <laughs> I literally saw. Okay, hold on. A segue. So just so everybody knows, Beth, um, if you haven't followed her on Twitter, you guys need to. But posted. You know, there's like cheap. Uh, I shouldn't say cheap, Groceries. affordable, Here, affordable, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> affordable frosted sugar cookies that, you know, you can get year round and different variations of holiday uh, decorations um, said that they were absolutely disgusting and trash. And can I yeah. say that I actually respect your following even more because so many of your followers that were commenting love them. They're delicious. Yeah. And you know what? You're all crap. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> 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 how do you not like that when you're fucking popping an edible like, and you're just like man these are so good you know what they actually are kind of chalky when you're high you're like wait a minute they're but... they're chalky if you're not they're, <laughs> no, they're, they're just not. like it's impossible and yes they are. okay first of all if you look at the photo if you look at the photo it says best until january 23rd <laughs> we, so, we got a month girl Babe. we got a month <laughs> <laughs> you still got a month to eat something that's just going to disintegrate into powder oh, in your God. mouth. Well, where are oh, they at? So I can go get me some. Well, <laughs> they, they were, on were sale. in Walmart today when I was there. So I just, they were the first thing that you see on a display rack as I entered. The, and I just sat back and I looked at it and I said, when I was seven, <laughs> this was the dream. And now that I have an esteemed <laughs> palette at the age Girl. of 34. Give me them this... sugar cookies. <laughs> Listen, I- I'll I eat them with my that. nubs on. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some cookies you can eat with your nubs. Um, right? Oh my God. No, so, I mean, listen. So back to drag. Just like all drag is valid, <laughs> all sugar cookie tastes are valid, but your taste buds might just be broken, and that's fine, you know? <laughs> um, I forgot what I was yelling at you before. <laughs> your cookies, so. I don't remember. We were talking about outfits that we didn't like. Oh, okay, so here's an outfit that, uh, two outfits that I, that come to mind as <laughs> things that I love the concept of, hated execution of. Um, and I shouldn't say hate it. Hate is a strong word, although for Abora it is true. The the Abora um cheerleader outfit for the zombie prom. Nobody wears cheerleader outfits prom. Mm -hmm. Not even the cheerleaders. Oh, so, the like, cheerleader would like, never wear the no, she's popular. The, she ain't gonna go in a dress no, her, her, her she's, uniform. She's gonna be the one who wears like the gets away with the little midriff showing mm -hmm. with like the two-piece dress situation right like yeah. that would have been great especially because they wanted to make sure that their um skin was coming off and such and i loved that idea so like have somebody who's like really showing off their skin and loving that but you can do that in a prom dress because yeah. that's what every girl does like so many of these like girls and femmes who are going to to prom or like T doing self tanner and making their yeah, skin yeah. shimmer and all that kind of stuff that would have been so cool but i also didn't like the execution of the skin it looked blue it didn't look well i think it was supposed like, to look like like i think it was more uh, like i felt like it was more like cartoony zombie than it was yeah. like it was like pop art zombie to me is what i was thinking mm. than than regular but um and I didn't, I thought the tits were supposed to come apart. I thought she was like rotting. I did too. And then and when so they, they were said like, that. when they said that, I was kind of like, can you just give her this? Cause uh, I was like, oh, I j and I thought that was even funnier. I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Her tits are ripping off and like she's jumping <laughs> up and down. She was jumping like yeah. this. And I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Like, I, I, I love that. Um, I was actually wondering what people thought about, cause I know this is a controversial issue about uh when uh when uh cis uh males um decide to do um jokes around That's the right. vagina oh and yeah. and um equate it to having uh being like a monster or teeth or stuff like that i was like when astrid had mm -hmm. that and i know astrid also had it in like in the ass crack too but mm -hmm. i was thinking it was more focused on the conversation was on sure. the vagina and so i was just like Oh my gosh, I wonder what people are thinking about this because I know about like the term fish being used on yep. there and that being controversial. And I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder if people are gonna say stuff about this. Like, 
I actually like, didn't see too much online about that, but I not think that I'm trying to start anything. It was just no, let's it was start just it. Like let's a, start it, Jeremy. Oh my god! No, no, no. Out here. Um, yeah, oh, Jeremy she's offended. Here, oh, um, is offended on behalf <laughs> of vagina having people. No. Um, I just I think if the point of the outfit is to poke fun or I don't know, like to. Can you hear my husband talking in the background, by the way? I just heard like a, ah, and I just so if, figured, you know, torture in the background. <laughs> um, so if anybody can hear this, my husband, um, who's also a big gamer nerd, is playing uh, WoW with his homies right now. And that's World of Warcraft. Uh, they're raiding. So wow. if you guys hear anybody in the background, it's it's them. But yeah. <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I kind of feel like it's, it's about intention when you do art right um in the same way that there was a lot of people who were starting um coco had a conversation on twitter about um her breast, her right? breast plates or mm -hmm. their breast plates i should say and i i think it's about intention and impact right so if your intention is very clear and the intention of um of what you're trying to say is supposed to be from a place of power right that like the vagina having teeth is like a don't mess with me kind of thing i think that's absolutely fine but if it's supposed to be like a hey, vaginas are gross and scary and blah, 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 then mm -hmm. that's where I feel like you cross into misogynistic um, realms. Now, of course, this is my opinion, and I don't represent all cis <clears throat> women and females and everything mm -hmm. out there, but I, that's just something that I... I the way I interpret things. And the same thing with breasts. Like I, we, you know, you're we talking about a special I guest. Know. I know he's whining and I didn't want him to like cry next to me. So we have a special guest. This is Lego everybody. So but, Lego. Um, yeah. okay. Lego. What are your thoughts on Dragula Titans? What do you think about breastplates on cis males? Well, <laughs> no <gasps> comment. You have to, uh, wow. No yeah, comment. No. He's I expensive. Love that. I taught him well. I can't. <laughs> What's his fee? <laughs> How much are we gonna have to pay for this? <laughs> Three boxes of sugar cookies. <laughs> oh, love yourself, Lego. Come on, you can do better than that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I just kind of generally feel like, again, like Coco's, like, I think they, they were having the conversation with people online that where it was about, hey, I had comically huge Tatas that I used as weapons and that kind of thing. I can see where people would be upset with that. Where like a lot of people who have large breasts, it is a huge inconvenience. It's a lot of weight in the front, causes back issues. They can't find shirts that fit them. There's all these, like, <clears throat> there's lots of things that go into that, right? There's dysmorphia it causes. So I can absolutely understand that being honestly triggering to see. But again, I felt like Coco was coming from a place of, I'm going to beat you up with my titties and show you strength in this and that I'm strong because I'm able to use this in the way that like some people would use their thighs to like go around somebody. Right. In the way that people would use their arms and um, and that kind of thing. And I just kind of felt like for me personally, I didn't have an issue with that, but yeah. I can understand if other people did. So. Yeah. Well, I don't have breasticles, so I have no opinion. <laughs> That's right. So I do. Well, I, I lied. I do. Um, I do think that uh, Coco does uh, respect women and 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 yeah. uh, uh, loves and adores them, and 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 would never, in, in my heart of hearts, or true of hearts, just don't think that she would ever do anything to do it. But no, and and that's where I, I think yeah. it's important too, right? Where if you when you get to know performers and artists and people in general, you have a Oh, you said when you're cultured, you... No, I'm just kidding. When you are cultured, <laughs> when you have a perspective in order to really... No. <laughs> um, when, yeah. when, in the same way that, like, you and I have gotten to know each other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. we can be, you know, sarcastic and whatever going back and forth. And we know yeah. what our, each other's intention is when we say yeah, these yeah, things yeah, yeah. to each other. But if we didn't know each other and we were saying a comment, you might be like, that shady little bitch. Like, yeah. Blah, yeah. blah, 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 right? No, I say that anyways. I mean, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and guess what? I meant it a shade. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, that was my intention, actually, was to. And your intentions were clear, and I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, but I think yeah. that that's what's important, right? When you get yes. to know a person and their what their intentions likely are to be, there's <clears> less <throat> likely to be a miscommunication between yeah. intention and impact. So that's yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. That's what I'm coming for. Coco is clearly a very outspoken ally. Um, is non-binary themselves, so has um appreciation for other trans people for trans femmes does you know both drag king drag queen looks does gender queer looks does all these different kinds of things so the perspective there is very unique and different and so rather than just getting all up in arms i think it's more important to pay attention to those um perspectives and uh, of of the art itself um, yeah. coming from an artist like her so um okay so let's Let's kind of go back to the finale here. Do we have to? I'm just kidding. <laughs> what well, I about it? <laughs> I, I think it's important that we're almost an hour in and we haven't talked about um, the fact that the winner is Victoria Elizabeth Black. And oh, have we not? Yeah, we haven't even oh, mentioned congrats, that. Victoria girl. Elizabeth. Yes, come on, Victoria. <laughs> um, how oh, do you feel? Uh, uh, with Victoria as a winner, Do, are you happy with this? Uh... I mean, I, I, from the last podcast we did, I said from the get go that was in my that they were in my top, and um, it's just I there was just a different level of artistry. Um, the way that they handled situations, I thought were okay. was very professional. Like, okay, let, let's be real. So if, if you're going to go on the show, and this goes with on any show, but if you're going to okay. go on the show and you're going to represent whatever this brand is, and um, you're going to tour the world with this name as a winner, you have to be able to carry yourself and put out this, you know, uh, drama-free, professional, um, you know, great look. Looks have to be on point. Um, and and she exude, exuded that from from the very first episode. So yeah. um, even even when uh, she was in the bottom for uh, the D and D, it was still like it, it, she still looked great and beautiful, and she handled it in a professional way. She didn't make excuses and was like, "No, I I fucked up. I struggled through this." And that to mm -hmm. me is a sign of like um, just being an ad adult, really, like owning up yeah. and, and you know accountability. And I think. It, I, I do think it was very unfair to put every, everybody knew watching Victoria was either going to win or definitely going to be in the top, if, like no doubt, yeah. but to put them in for the elimination to where, you know, two by two up there and one person's going to drop and one person's going to save. I do think it would have been better if they put all four, because like, if I was going to be paired up with Victoria, I'd be like, I feel bad because Victoria's going home, you know? Um, yeah. And so, <laughs> no, I, I'd feel bad. If, like Eva was up yeah. there and you just knew Eva was already new. Like she was like, I'm, it's over for me. And, and I, like, how defeated really, and let down. I, I don't understand how Eva was not in the top three. Like that for me. I don't is, either. It, I felt like Eva had some of the best looks of the season. Oh, hands down. <laughs> for the exception of the of the wrestling. That's yeah. And the, but it I, wasn't even a bad look. It wasn't a bad look. No, it was the performance like, was a little like even I went back and watched the episode. Their like performance is so much better than they make it out to be in the Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I really, really honestly think that like Eva is one of the best, if not the best performer they've had on the show that like they can do like, you know what you're going to expect, but you don't know because you like, you know, they're going to be able to bring a really great performance. Mm -hmm. And there's some people I kind of know what they're going to do every single time, regardless of whatever the outfit or the story or the floor show is. I know the moves they're going to do. And there's something that Eva is able to do that kind of makes it feel like a new thing every single time yeah. and creeps me out or brings me in or whatever the case is going to be. Eva is just incredible. And it's yeah. just shocking to me that they held Eva to such a high standard when yeah. other people who were such incredible artists, like, like Coco and Hoso and other and, um, that were in the top as well, like that they didn't get the same kind of criticism. Now I understand you can't just compare people. I understand that. But if you're going to say something about Astra doing the same movements all the time, Hoso should probably get that as well, right? Mm -hmm, if you're mm -hmm. gonna say something like, and they loved it, actually, they commented about how they love Hoso. <laughs> and I was like, and you know what? You say not to compare, but in this situation, you are being compared to your peers because sure. this is this is the part of the challenge. Like, how did well did you do in comparison to how well this person did? So you are going to be compared to this thing. And, they, and, and you know, they they say they're not judging the drag. The drag is objective, you know, and it's their own art. But um, you are, <laughs> you you are though. Okay. Um, 
And so I, I do. I. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm here today <laughs> I, with no I, credentials to I, sit back and judge you. My, uh, the one, uh, the thing that bothered me, and I told you this before, that bothered me when people were trying to say off their like top three is that that everybody would be like victoria you deserve to be in the top you're the most talented human being on this earth blah 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 yeah. and then they'd be like um uh, coco you deserve to be in the top because you know we need that representation i think that'd be great for people which really i hated that i hated yeah. that wording and i and you know i don't think that they meant it in a bad way or if maybe they didn't realize how it came off but like I was talking to my friends about it too, and 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 like um, people of color and and my and black friends that I have that are like, wait a minute, like, that, like why you why why what the why does she need to be in the top because representation like so only because she's you know a, a queen of color up there you know what I mean like right. what it, that was weird to me and I I didn't like that and I don't think that they meant it in a bad way but I, to me that wording was a little bit sus it came out as like tokenization like mm -hmm. oh you know victoria you deserve to be there because of talent and eva you deserve to be there because of talent and coco you deserve to be there because you we, need talent, we need representation <laughs> representation like i know exactly what you're talking about it definitely made me feel uneasy i think what's kind of just to give coco a lot of roses here i think coco had such a really cool underdog story throughout this entire season oh, yeah. where yeah, yeah, yeah. it started quite frankly, at the bottom and was able to really rise to the challenge. I like that. And Coco knows this, like Coco owned this in the, in the finale episode, both in the podcast interview and in confessionals, they know that their style of drag is not a Victoria Elizabeth black, every single details accounted for kind of thing, but they're not trying to be either, but they're not trying to be. And they have a real sense of who they are. They know mm -hmm. how to really think about like who else would have thought to be the boulets for like yeah. the like in and, and do it in a way that was so clearly still coco style i love that they think outside the box i love that they do those kind of things i think that their story was really incredible to see and i would love i would have loved for their competitors to be able to sit back and go you deserve to be there because your talent your creativity and your drive has brought you here in addition yeah. to blah, I, blah 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 I wish they would have said I wish they would have said it and maybe that's what they meant when they said sure. you know maybe that's what they meant I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say maybe that's what it meant but they they should have used those words mm -hmm. because it didn't come off as that way because they kept saying yeah. representation or the, you know words along that and so I was just like I don't like that I need you to re-say that in different, yeah, yeah. In different words um, race. yeah yeah I'm, I'm not I'm not into that it reminded but, me um, like when I took the Spanish regents in high school and they would say like okay we're in the speaking portion do you want to like rephrase what you just said um because you just said dog but you meant to say but and I'm like yeah. okay I, you know that's just where <clears throat> it was coming off it's like let's rephrase this a little bit yeah yeah, yeah 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 um, but um yeah so yeah, I definitely agree. I, I think that I think that, you know, if I had a dream top three, it would have been Victoria, Eva, and Hoso. Um, mm -hmm. But that said, I was not mad that Coco made it to the end, but I was very disappointed that Eva did not make it. Yeah. Um, I kind of felt like it was going to be Eva or Victoria from the beginning. As like you said, we both said that in the very beginning of like the, the, the first podcast that we did. Um, I am very interested to see what the Boulets mean now when they say this was kind of a closing of the first chapter. What's it going to be moving forward? Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. But one last thing that we didn't talk about, Jeremy, that I think is really important. Fright feats. Uh -huh. um, what was the point? What was the point? I just, you mean like the eating the brains and all this? Yeah, like yeah. So the extermination challenges um, have been amazing because it shows people doing what they need to do in order to stay in the competition. Yeah. And the threat of, and they even brought it up like randomly halfway through the season after the first episode, like it was like on episode five or whatever. It was like, remember, if you fail to complete the fright feat, then you are automatically yeah. removed from the competition. Blah, blah. But they always they never showed half of them being completed yeah. and like the one where they get like spun around or whatever, you could hear people clearly retching yeah. and like they weren't supposed to get sick. Yeah. And I was like, well, does that mean someone goes home? Oh, nope. No one went home. I guess Erica's still by Erica. You're still gone. Yeah. Um, and I just, I just like felt like, what was the point? I kind of felt like this is an example where, um, 
I don't know, like people just had. Uh, I think it was just inter exactly. entertainment value. I think people yeah. people like those in the past, you know, like, and I think they did. It was just entertainment value. I do. Uh, I, they kept everybody on there, really. Like, so I, I don't know. It's just to get. Yeah. I think those clips and the footage. Um, and but some of them, really. one week, they arm wrestled. Yeah. And then next week they're eating brains. That's Okay, but the next week, okay, and I understand some people were like, it's really not that scary, Beth, but bitch, you are inside my mind where, with all my anxieties. Um, the next week literally would have scared the shit out of me. Is it the water one? Yes. Oh, um, me too. Oh, 100%. Because here's the thing. I was like, I was a swimmer in high school. Like, I could hold my breath underwater for a long time. Like, that doesn't it's bother different. me. It's a different thing. When, I don't know if people noticed this. Like, I clocked this immediately. There was, a like, a bar that came down onto their shoulders, so they couldn't rise up either. Yeah. So yeah. they were stuck in one place. And I'm sure the water rose up for, like, 10 seconds. Like, I'm sure it wasn't actually yeah. a lot. But I'm claustrophobic. Yeah. yeah. And if I feel like I can't move, I literally start hyperventilating. Yeah. And so if then water comes up, like, that to me was like, oh, so, like, there's so, there's no way to not do this other than to quit or freaking die. Like what? <laughs> the, like, could you imagine? They're like, Beth's been eliminated because she literally freaking died. <laughs> I, like, I, I would be interested to see how long. They, I know they'll they'll never reveal that, but like, I would be interested to see how long they were in there. I I yeah. literally I said the same thing. I I I I think I could swallow the pig brains. I would just swallow. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I, it was that one challenge that I was like, oh my God, like, I don't, I think I would get in my head. I have a hard time. I can swim, but when I start mm -hmm. going underwater, I, my breathing, I panic. I don't know how to, mm -hmm. I can't do it. And so I know that I would you just. You shouldn't breathe underwater. That's, I, I'll give you that hint for free. Well, I'm living my aerial moment. If she can do it, I can. <laughs> so I. <laughs> Look at this stuff. <laughs> 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 I, so, no, but I, I like panic and I can't i don't know how to like uh like snorkeling and stuff i i panic i don't know how to breathe in the, with my mask and everything and so i yeah. that one really actually scared me i was like there's no way there's no way and then to focus on a lock while the water's going and everything i'm like oh no no yeah but it but lock, it's entertainment it got us talking and i, I that's thought, why they do shit like that yeah oh totally and like i was like okay but here's the thing there have been other fright feats in the past where i was like oh i would hate this like when they had to have like those huge needles pierced Excuse me, oh, through them. And then, like, like season, season one? Two. Oh, two, two. I was like, yeah, when they're like, early. here you go. We're going to take this huge bar and stick it through you. I was like, I had my ears pierced and um, the gun got stuck and I almost passed out. Like, I mean, I can't. <laughs> I was 12, but still. Like, <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine Dragula Kids edition where they bring oh on, like, a kid? And you're like, that's actually that was I think that was an SNL um parody skit where they did Fear Factor Kids Edition. And so they oh would be like God. you're like, okay, you're gonna have to eat all these cockroaches or else you'll never see your mom and dad again. And they're all like, you know, like I'd be like, Well then I guess I ain't eating them. <laughs> <laughs> That's on trauma. <laughs> As I, wait, hold on. We need to be Grateful, grateful <laughs> and, thankful blessed. and blessed. What's that like? I'm, I'm white. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just in case you wanted to, just some. That's that's as good as a DNA test, right there. Not there that you go. need it when you look at me, but just there you are. I'm trying to. I'm trying to uh, brighten this light so I get my privilege. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I brighten my light, I disappear. <laughs> which is exactly what happens, I guess, with white pearl. <laughs> oh Actually, God. I get really red in the face. So that's the only thing that keeps me from <laughs> blending into the snow. Jeez. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. What would you like to see in a future season of Dracula? Like a regular season, we'll say, not like a tr a Titan season. Oh, um, hmm, I'm trying to think. Um, <sighs> I wish I knew this question before. <laughs> um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't do that. I want you I to, know. to, to suffer on the spot. This is my own fright feat for you. I would like a challenge where they tell where the girls kind of have to, um, 
assign other people i like i like when i see people be strategic with their um with their in, in a game like this um where people have to assign roles like um maybe there's a challenge where they have to do a classic uh, like the, the, see this is a thing i don't know like with drag race we were given a list of what we need to bring so right. like we were so i guess i don't know how this would work unless it was like a design challenge where like they gave them the supplies and mm -hmm. that way they can make this up but i think that'd be really cool and i want to see people's strategic like how their strategy would be to uh put people out or you know uh, they're maybe they have um an ally or something but um assign roles like you're going to be this character you're going to be this character you're going to be this character like they could be like we're all going to be i don't know um, fairies dark fairies or whatever yeah um, goth fairies and this is what you have to wear this is what you have to wear with i don't know something along those lines but i want to see stuff where people can be more strategic and maybe that's just the evil villain in me and plotting against people but i think that well, okay. it would make it would make great tv <laughs> um and um i think it would just be fun to see how people can like switch on a dime to like um create something uh yeah, we go back to um, Abora when she was throwing the bald, you know, um, for the witch and and how fast she had to turn her look around and then ended up just killing it. Like it, it was, was so just good. amazing. Um, but shit like that, I think, is is cool. I, it's, it is hard to do like uh, stuff on the spot like that in these type of shows because everything mm -hmm. has to be prepared. But I feel like if they gave them time to do it, that'd be really cool to see. I think it'd be really interesting to do a version of a makeover challenge where they have to make over each other. Mm. So where you have to design a concept for another queen um, that they then have to like execute maybe. So it's not yeah. actually you're making them over, you're assigning them what you, the kind of similar to what you're saying, or you're responsible for painting them to go with what their outfit looks like, right? And so yeah. people are judged not only on their design and execution of the outfit, but also how well they painted their yeah. competitor. You, you know what I thought would be really cool too? And it's kind of like, <clears throat> we were talking about like the prom thing and like the mm -hmm. transformation. I think being able to transform in one piece would be really cool. Yeah. Um, And, and tell a story that way. Um, it, It's really hard because like, now that I'm saying this out loud, I, I did a two in one for all stars. So uh, the, uh, it's hard when you're doing all these drag challenges because with two big shows like this, mm -hmm. <laughs> what's, what's left. Um, yeah. So. But I think that what's interesting is like, what about like a, a nightmare Christmas? Ooh, see, here's the thing. They've been filming, like it goes from Halloween to Christmas. It'd be so cool if they did do like a, give us a horror christmas you know yeah, that's give such a, a good genre too give us a horror, filth like, christmas give us yeah. something like that that would just be like you know like santa shitting out you know like candy canes or something or yeah I, I think that'd be really but really cool something like that i just think that there are there are absolutely things that we could go yeah this comes on drag race but a little bit but i think that because dragula really represents like alternative underground drag that you can get away with doing things and executing them in wildly more creative ways that's outside yeah. the box and outside the quote unquote mainstream even if the show continues to get more mainstream like the the reason why the show gets more mainstream is because it is so alternative mm -hmm. like i could see like you have to lean into that and i would really hate for them to lose that identity because they're like well you know we're gonna like do a double Shantae this week and we're gonna do like just things like that that un just because they're second to do it rather than you know like I'm gonna yeah. you're automatically gonna think of drag race for that right yeah. and I would much rather that they lean into yeah well we did a double Shantae but that means that these two people have to do xyz next week instead yeah. like they have to do a fright feat by themselves before they even get into the competition yeah and like whatever the case it's something like that or I the first episode where they voted this season, I was like, oh no, we're not doing voting like drag races yeah. voting on all stars, right? And thankfully it was just like a one episode thing, but I'm kind of fine with a one episode, but here's the caveat of things that you yeah. have to do for, yeah. for Dragula, right? I've always said that I and I've said this with Drag Race too, but I now Dr Dragula's gotten so big now that they're, they're doing their tours. I mean, Astrid mm -hmm. literally said, like, I just want to be on the tour. Um, right. I have said that because we travel so much, we constantly have to get in looks like super, super fast. I think it would be so cool, like so fucking epic if um 
they had to get ready the moment they were picked up at the airport and then brought to like like they'd they'd have to time that but like either picked up from the airport or picked up from the hotel like they have to to get to set but they have to get ready because you're always going to be touring you're always going to be you know you have to get in, in fast and i think that would be such a really cool challenge to see like how fast can you get how fast can this monster get ready so um yeah that's I think really, be really cool. cool there is i've always had this like dream in the back of my mind that they would never do this although i say that World of Wonder is going to do it at some point. I know it. Um, the idea that they do like a a drag race that has a big brother component to it where like you see like what's going on. So they were supposed to do that for All Stars 2. Really? And, yeah, there was talks about doing it for All Stars 2. And when we talked to production about it, they were saying that um, a, 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 it cost too much money um, mm -hmm. and because they'd have to pay for all of us. Our, all of our fees would have to go, go up because of it. And right. um, it's just too much production. And because they were on a... Um, there was some sort of hour system that they had to be mm -hmm. on that they weren't allowed to be recording for those those other extra hours. So like so, a union uh, thing, probably. Yeah. I also think like it's harder. It's harder to tell the story of people totally. being of like if they want me to be the villain. Like it's harder to edit me to be a villain if if they see how I really am live because then people are gonna know like oh Jeremy's not that person. Well, but then like the when showing yeah it ruins it. And I'm not necessarily saying like you have live feeds or whatever, which I definitely like. Boy, that would have been nice for you, huh? <laughs> if people could have seen, like, I hate Oh, my God. Can you imagine that live feeds? Oh, no. Some of these favorites? Oh, baby. Ah! Baby. Oh, <laughs> oh no, Some no. Some of your least favorites have become your favorites. I That's find nice. it so funny now how many emails and how many DMs and how many messages I'm getting there. Like, you were right when you said this. And I don't even respond anymore because now I get, I'm, I'm just at the point now where I'm just laughing. Like, I see all this drama on Twitter about said queens, and I'm just like, I'm over here playing Pokemon, y'all. Don't bother me, y'all. Y'all, y'all should have listened when I told y'all. No, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> so hashtag but, Jeremy said that. Um, but that would be cool to have like a life, like not a live feed, but like um, like a little bit behind the well, scenes. Well, it's kind of like I'm thinking. That, you remember like how America's Next Top Model had them like back at the, the house, house as well. Yeah. Like that's a lot of what shows I'm basically that. Yeah. thinking, like right where you have like Project a little Runway. bit of a look, right? And I think this idea that like imagine the drama first of all you wouldn't have to worry about being on ice as much but like imagine the drama of like being in the van going back and forth where yeah you know or oh this was resolved and we don't actually have to push the the story and i can't tell you how many times there's like way better content in the van oh i'm sure like it, it that's so... not shocking yeah, no, we would get yelled at all the time because it's funny because like when the cameras cut off, we're all friends. We were all having a, a kiki in the in the van and everything. Um, but uh, we they would yell at us often. We can't talk about news. You can't talk about you know current events or anything like that because some people that watch the show think it's in real time, which boggles my mind. Um, I don't understand it. Wow. Um, but but um, I do think that would be cool. I, I would love to see like on Project Runway when they go try to find their fabrics or you know what I mean? Like that type yeah. of thing. Like, well, like, how are you making this stuff? Because one of the things that was brought up about is like, oh, you do all your stuff last minute was one of the arguments on there, mm -hmm. uh, especially for Coco. Um, I... I, I am interested to see because I always feel like they have pieces there. And like in my mind, mm -hmm. like being in this situation, I feel like maybe production's like, all right, set everything out. We're going to go one by one, talk to you guys and figure out, you know, what you guys are doing and just pretend like you're working on stuff. So I'm interested to see how that like aspect and yeah. component is because we never really get to see them crafting. Well, we really don't see. I have a feeling that they're doing last minute touches on things, but they're yeah. not actually like the rhinestoning. The majority of it. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that's what was supposed to set the finale well, apart. Coco did have, when they showed Coco making uh, their Poseidon looking seahorsey mm, thingy, mm -hmm. that was a brand new piece that they made. So they did make no, so I'm yeah, interested true. to see how much time they have. I don't know how much, I don't, I don't know. I, I would like, I Even would like something to as simple. Okay. Two production things. I know I said this last time, please start putting pronouns in people's names at the bottom. I think that's just like common courtesy. You have a queer cast who has a variety of different pronouns. Let's start doing that. That'd be great. Um, but the other thing that would be great is like. Queer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they just put queer in parenthesis. <laughs> no, 
no, they just say one of them queer. <laughs> <laughs> they just put the alphabet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it would be great just to like give us a time lapse of like like a clock and that shows yeah. us like three hours later, five hours later, two days later, whatever the case is, right? That just kind of gives us and sure they might fudge it up a little bit, right? Um people who are true fans of the show survivor know how much time is actually between each vote out but if you're watching the show you think everything happens in one day but normally it's like three days or two yeah. days or whatever yeah. the case is right but everything's edited down so survivor sometimes will be like by the way this happened the day before and you're like oh okay thank you it's been two days great i have the context now just having that context i think is really helpful especially for a show that is so design focused yeah. um given the kind of talent that they have yeah great yeah i agree jeremy do you have last thoughts concerns suggestions praise that you want to say about <laughs> what um, please can... tell me that was a dog in the background uh, yes because the green screen broke and it looked like a skunk ran away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's Atari, so my my other dog is black and white. <laughs> oh my God, Atari so looks like a skunk. <laughs> and if I have a pet skunk? <laughs> <laughs> In Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, named okay. Queer. Queer! <laughs> queer! No, it was so Atari. Um, and so, um, any praise, I mean, good. congrats, Boulay Brothers, for putting on something so amazing, as yeah. always, and, and something so different and cool and fun. Um, and, and to the um, contestants this season, it, it was really good. And I do hope that they, when they go back and watch this, as uh, any of us that have been on TV do, um, we go back and watch everything and like kind of like uh reevaluate it reevaluate everything i hope that they realize that like these little relationship little petty arguments that they had um or stuff like that or like uh just being honest and truthful to people like uh for for, for like melissa's sake too like you have mm -hmm. someone that's like so true and cares about people um but they kind of just let all that go like the older i get the more i'm just like y'all look ridiculous <laughs> you know like like just let short. it go yeah let's just create art and have a good time and um i think um yeah they're doing a good job i can't wait to see more i totally agree i echo your sentiments and um i just want to say too that i think we saw a lot of drama on this season that in the future i'm sure it's important to put on television to a certain extent but one of the things i've always liked about dragula is the dra the drama has found its way to the competition itself and mm. i felt like the drama was so personal this time that it was kind of really uncomfortable to watch it wasn't like entertaining yeah um, no it was playing with people's hearts it was playing with people's like mm -hmm. real emotions and hearts yeah and, yeah um and that kind of thing and uh, you know i'm happy you know just love and respect to, to people like Melissa, for example, in nothing but love here. Um, and, you know, obviously wishing the best for everybody involved, but I, I just want to say like, I really enjoyed the season. I know that I feel like we spent a lot of time being like, I wish we could have changed these things, but honest to God, this was a great season. In my opinion, Dragula is a far superior show to Drag Race. I've said it time and time again. I love the creativeness of this. I love that it gets to the roots of what modern alternative drag is. That it's, mm -hmm. it can be something that is a little bit more, quote unquote, crafty in the sense of like, the same things that like cosplay can be like you take these things that you've never thought of before to use it in this way to make yeah. it look like this like that to me is so incredible as someone who has absolutely no talent or imagination to do that myself um again ideas woman if you want to become hillary clinton and drag <laughs> shitting out um emails and you know vomiting i hope someone does that i'm here for do. you um but like <laughs> But I really think that Dragula has done such a good job of showcasing just another area of queer, queer. relationships, queer, <laughs> um, <laughs> queer relationships <laughs> and art. And I, I just, I, I so s salute that. I think yeah, hundred percent. So, all right, Jeremy, where can people find you if you would like to be found? Or if you'd like um, to go incognito after this, I understand. You are queer. Um, I'm queer. Um, so that's going to be, you can get my merch, queer. Um, 
So I, uh, everywhere is just Jeremy, J-U-S-T-J-A-R-E-M-I, um, literally everywhere um, you can find me there. Um, I've, uh, who knows what the fuck's happening with Twitter. I'm still there until we find <laughs> another social. Can I just tell you, I don't want to start a new social. I, I don't like Elon. I can't, but I'm just like, I'm too old that like, and now I'm just going to be like, just email me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, like honestly write me a handwritten letter literally send me like a messenger out bitch because i don't even want to try i'm just like tired can we say <laughs> i am back i would love aol instant messenger i need like a door shut and all that i miss it oh that triggers me does like, it do you know do you know how often i would sit and just watch for my crush to come on and they would come oh on and i'd be God. like ah! and then they'd leave and i go oh. i was thinking about putting like when people lurk in my channel as the aol door for their leaving, I was. I'm never about coming to your channel again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm be so triggered every time. No, that's a joke, of course. But yeah, so um, yeah, you can find me there and uh, stop by, say hi, and um, yeah, and I love this. This is great. Yeah, please check out Jeremy, especially on Twitch. Um, go follow if you have the money to subscribe. I promise you, it's more than worth it. Um, Jeremy does such a wonderful job cultivating a really fun community, um, and it's a lot they're of fun okay. over there. They're okay. They're okay. There, yeah. They're fine. Uh, no, I know they're all good. Um, and also check out the um, team level up on Twitch, uh, which is Jeremy's amazing team um, as well. Um, you can find me at Augusta Wind 11 on all my social media channels um, as well. Um, and you can also catch me starting the, you know, 15 month coverage of RuPaul's Drag Race season 15 coming up in how many days at this point so i'm excited to be back in the saddle with liana and amon discussing that um i would love to remind you all that it is the beginning of a new month coming in the new year so it's a great time to become a patron over at rhap so if you would like to become a patron and have exclusive access to you know facebook groups and discords and wonderful uh, patron only podcasts and shows and games it's a wonderful time to do that. We're in between survivor season. So please become a patron if you're interested um, over at patreon.com slash RHAP. Um, and thank you again to Scott St. Pierre behind the scenes um, and to Tricky Rice for all of your work with the, the graphics. Thank you all to everybody else. And we'll see you next time, uglies.